Hi. Hi. Hello, love. <laughs> Who I'll are you? To... Huh? Who are you? I'm Seki. And I will change the name that shows up on Zoom. <laughs> At this point, my professors know me well enough that they won't be surprised. <laughs> are you saying that Seki is not your real name? All of this time, and I didn't even know. Oh, the betrayal. What about you? <laughs> what is my name? Have I figured this out yet? What did I say? Uh, I think you were considering taking a riff off of Dionysius in some way. Or oh, using yes. um, your middle name. I don't know about the middle name thing. It's my secret identity. Mm. Can't expose mm. that. And there are just too many jokes associated with Mr. D. Uh, also, I'm probably going to get sued. Uh. <laughs> I mean... Have you seen the musical? <laughs> if they didn't, if the if Rick Riordan didn't sue for the musical, uh, Uncle Rick seems like a cool guy. So, okay, my name is TBD, I suppose. <laughs> okay, we'll go with TBD. TBD. <laughs> Just fucking TBD. Um, <laughs> the whole pot, the whole time. Like if it's if it's it's like this huge ass, yeah, yeah TBD. TBD. God damn it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It'll be hilarious in the long run. Isn't it going to be horrible if now we actually have mics on, we don't have anything to talk about, when the point of this was, hey, we always have shit to talk about, and we think we're incredibly entertaining, which I think is like why most boring people make podcasts, because they have a best friend, and they're like, we should share this with the world. We're so cool. Look, I have and lost all <laughs> sense of shame as to, like, whether or not I'm actually an interesting person to listen to. Like, the, the, the channel has beaten that out of me. If you give me a topic, I will talk. It will not be good, but I will talk. <laughs> you know what we should talk about? <laughs> oh, dear. Black Hawk Down? No, no. I, I remember very little of that movie. I feel like I blanked that from my mind. Like the, uh, what was that super long old Western that we started and didn't finish? Running with the Wolves? I, Some fucking... Oh my, oh my God, God, Dances, Dances with Wolves. That's it! We didn't finish it. Oh my it, God. But I remember God starting God damn. It. Just losing the will to live with every moment Kevin Costner is on the screen. Fucking hell. Yeah, that was not a good experience in my life. <laughs> <laughs> like, what does it say that we got through Black Hawk Down and not Dances with Wolves? Not, yeah, Dances with Wolves. It says that they, I, it says that the movie industry has learned two things. The value of a brief runtime and the value of violent explosions. And not casting Kevin Costner. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen him in literally anything else. I want you to watch his version of Robin Hood just, no, no, just no. for how much you're gonna fucking hate it. No, no, the only valid Robin Hood is Carrie Ells in Robin Hood Men in Tights, because unlike other Robin Hoods, he speaks with a British accent. Elwes? I think it's Elwes. Is it Elwes? It's E-L-W-E-S. I have no fucking clue. Elves, Elwes, I don't know. I've never heard it said before. Owls? Owls. Carrie Owls. <laughs> I called him Carrie Elbows once, so... It's only one extra letter. <laughs> if it works. Okay, I have to say, I fundamentally disagree with you on Robin Hood Men in Tights being the only valid Robin Hood. Because there is also the, Disney the furry thirst trap that is, the, yeah, the Disney one. Did you hear about what they're doing with that one? No, what are... No, they're not. Come on. Live action Stop. furry. Stop it. <sighs> they're making a live action remake, but it's going to be the animals still. We got, wait, like the Lion King? Didn't that like do terribly no, even though no, no, Beyonce no. was in it? Like Robin Hood, the Disney one with anthropomorphic yeah. furries. That again. Yeah, I know. They did that with the Lion yeah. King. And Jungle And Book. it did really... It did really terribly. Yeah. Why? I, 
for the same reason that they thought they could make a better Mulan or a better is it, genie? Is it just for the very... What's the word? Um, very specific fetish fanfic that's going to come out in the wake of this? I, I would assume not. Uh, I would hope not. But, um, I wouldn't put it past Disney, honestly. But, uh, you know, it, it. they say it's happening. It's listed on Wikipedia in their upcoming movies. I'm that are part of that this. live action revival series that they've been making. In larger Disney news, um, Hayden Christensen just got cast in the Ahsoka series, which you know I'm freaking out about as an Anakin Skywalker prequels fan, nut, honestly, insane, obsessed person. Yes, uh, Nick Knack mentioned that to me. Hmm. Ah, yeah. Speaking of Nick Knack, who's in the anime podcast, Nick Knack having fucking having conversations about Star Wars with me like four years ago soon after Disney bought Lucasfilm and I was like they're gonna bring Hayden Christensen back they're gonna fucking do it they have to do it I need it they're gonna do it and he's like no they'll never do it and I you know being slightly salty and very vindicated with the news that Hayden Christensen will be in not only the Obi-Wan but also the Ahsoka show Ahsoka um Send that to him and he's like, yeah, I'm really excited with zero recognition of the fact that I was right and he was wrong and he should eat that. <laughs> that sounds exactly right. Um, I have recently been watching Lord of the Rings with this person. In what, question. you? Yes, the extended editions. Has he never, never seen, seen them before? He has, but apparently his dad watches them in a way where he actually breaks each of the extended editions into two smaller two-hour movies and then watches them as like a set of six instead of three. I'm kind of supportive of that. Yeah, I guess if you were watching them and you didn't have time to watch all in a day, like even four hours is a lot. Either way, we just finished Return of the King. Um, nice. I know. It's so wonderful. T two Towers is my favorite, of course. But, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. But, like, I hate watching movies with Nick Knack because he's like, fuck your childish joy and entertainment with just watching media created for you. I want to analyze the shit out of this and tell you all the parts of it that are bad. And I'm just yeah, like, see, this... I, I just want to enjoy the, the, ch <laughs> I'm, the inner child in me just likes watching stuff on screen. <laughs> See, this is why a podcast with the two of us where we talk about pop culture stuff is like maybe a weird idea that might destroy our friendship because I also watch things with a very analytical, I don't think overly critical, but definitely analytical gaze. See, but but the worst part is, right, is that like it's it's almost selective for me because depend, it depends on what we're watching because like, for example, we had to watch 86 for the, the Anime Club channel. Um, okay. It's a new anime I'm that came out. I know what that is. It it's like one of the big things that's come out in the last like two years. Um, you'd really like it. Um, oh yeah, you told me about this. Yeah, and like for I was like sat down to watch it, and I was like childish joy. Hold on to that because this is war and mecha, and I don't like those things. And then like I finally... wait, there are mechas. Yes, I'm in. Have you heard this? Have you heard of the book Iron Widow? It sounds really familiar, but I definitely haven't so, read it. So it's currently the New York Times uh, number one best-selling YA book, and it's uh, sci-fi. Um, it's written by a girl named a woman named uh, Jiran J. Zhao, and she does the YouTube videos. She got uh, she breathed out her. It's her who did the Mulan videos. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I actually that's why it sounds so familiar because I have it on my list because I watched those videos. I was like, I'm totally going to read your book. Yeah, it arrived at my house the other day. But um, I was reading the synopsis on the back of it. Um, it is incredibly similar to 86, like in, in plot okay. and such, in an interesting way, because it's obviously very different, but there's some like structural elements that are very, very similar in that it's a similar mm -hmm. um, uh, mecha mechanic, where it's um, 
there's a like a technological brain connection between the people piloting and the people in charge of the operation and um, oh nice it can cause like feedback and shit like that that'll actually cause the um person who's not operating it to like kill themselves or like go crazy okay um and turns out the pilots can do that nice. deliberately if they so choose also they are kind of being forced into it because it is an oppressive government system so no wonder why they wouldn't anyways but um I, we watched that and I, I like for once in my life i was just like all of the analyses all of the analysis <laughs> You're good at it. And I understand. Like, there's some shit where I'm like, I'm not thinking deeply about this. It, the problem only comes when I'm like, I'm going to tear this shit to shreds. And you are like, no, it's so bad. If I do that, I won't enjoy. See Game of Thrones season eight, where you like were so close to just beating the shit out of me. And I was so emotionally devastated by that whole clusterfuck. Yeah, by the time we got into <laughs> season eight, like my entire brain had just reverted to at least it's gonna be finished even if the book isn't. <laughs> you were you were walking around like this is fine, everything's fine, I'm still gonna enjoy it. And I was like this The is, world has ended. This, this has happened. We've They've done, done this. this. I still I still maintain that my biggest issue with season eight is the fact that in that battle in episode two or three, the, the, the directors do not acknowledge that in night battle scenes in epic shows like that, there should be some suspension of disbelief to light the fucking battlefield so we see what's happening. Right? Like, like you don't... Can you... Like, why, why would you make a show where if you're watching it at home with the lights off, you can't see the show? Like, eight seasons culminating in one shitty battle. Eight seasons with the founding story being winters so long that, like, children, like, grew old and died and never knew the sun and mothers smothered their babies and great battles and spiders the size of wolves and giants walking around everywhere and just, you know, generally awesome shit. And we get one battle, and by the way, it's so dark, you can't see it. <laughs> yeah, also the battle tactics are absolute shit. I only need glasses from trying to squint at that fucking episode so long. <laughs> oh yeah, that that's a mood. I fucking hated that. That's If one thing gets me, right, in any movie or TV show, it's the inability to see what's happening on screen because the producers didn't think it through. Like, for example, right, look at Harry Potter movies 7 and 8, right? Like, you can't see shit. And one of their, one of their um, excuses for that is that they filmed it on 3D cameras. And 3D cameras right. dull all colors and make it darker. Okay, but Hobbit came out around the same time. And they fixed that problem because they also filmed on 3D cameras in Hobbit. The solution okay, is that shit just... looks really oversaturated, though. Well, yeah, but the the solution to like the the saturation loss from 3D cameras is to just paint your sets hallucinogenic colors. Like there is a solution. <laughs> yes. Or just just look okay. at the. Okay, I'm sorry. I lighting in shows bothers me. I completely agree with you. I just, they also put that weird fucking blue filter over every movie after Twilight. Uh, yeah, I well, yes, after Twilight, but I was good. God damn it, New Line. Uh, no, was that New Line? That was totally New Line. Um, no, after uh, Order of the Phoenix going forward. Because, like, Goblet of Fire is still those really golden tones you see in 1 and 2, and then Quran did that really... It's not washed out, but it's a lot more monochromatic for the third one. And then 4 is all warm again, and 5 is just like, here it's dim, and it's gray, and it reflects his teenage soul. It's like, ugh, his teenage soul is just angsty. His teenage soul is the section of Hot Topic I didn't shop in. The section that isn't fandom dedicated, it's just the section that's, like, black in the back. It's, it's the, the vampire, vampire kids, kids section. section. Yeah. Or it's, like, pre-Hot Topic becoming fandom obsessed Hot Topic. Spencer's. Spencer's has too many sex toys. Harry's not getting that much action. I mean... That boy is It depends awkward. on whether... 
It depends on whether you're reading the fanfic or the canon. I was, Brett was over here, the knickknack was over here the other night, and I was uh, fucking, <laughs> I know, I was, I was on Instagram. And I, there was this one, it was the, the Draco Malfoy ending that we got, right? With Draco walking away down the bridge. The Draco Malfoy ending that we wanted. Draco running across the battlefield to embrace Harry! Harry. <laughs> Not even Potter. Not, Not even, even like, Harry. okay, I'm just changing sides. I'm just going to walk quickly. I like, they could have done it where he did that like weird walk jog people thing people do when they're like late for something, but they don't want to run. So they're like, I can't be running right now. I'm just going to walk extra fast. Like that would have been hilarious. But no, like that deleted scene is just him straight up like making a break for it straight to Potter's arms. I fucking, that's the ending we all wanted. <sighs> Back to mechs, though. What is it that is just so cool about anything on the scale that grand? Like, because, like, okay, I feel like bombs are really boring. Like, nuclear bombs never go off because, like, okay, you're done. Whatever. That's boring. I can boring. tell you why like, it's interesting. Because mechs are man. Tell me why. Bombs are not. Yes, yes exactly. exactly. Yeah. But, like... I just want to see shit get wrecked. Like, when Thanos throws a moon, I'm like, I want to throw a moon. Go, Shinji, get in the robot. Right? Like, wouldn't it be so much cooler if, instead of having a Death Star, you just had a very focused, like, Force user in the middle of a deep, like, 16-hour meditative state? Just, like, maybe fuck with the iron core of a habitable planet and suddenly it's not habitable anymore. Like that's so much cooler than like kyber crystals activated boom. It's why I like Veronica so much. It's the Hulkbuster what? armor. Oh yeah. That's why I like yeah. Veronica so much. <laughs> like uh there's just something so satisfying about something so big it can wreck a city or like a continent that's pretty cool yeah and the best part is that you get the like with mechs too because they're manned you get to be a giant fucking robot like you're not controlling it from like behind a controller you are in a giant robot blowing shit up yeah, yeah. You, you know what happens if i punch a skyscraper, skyscraper? Nothing. nothing you know what happens if fucking an evangelion Punches a skyscraper, everything. There's no more skyscraper. <laughs> Which is, like, terrible, but pretty cool. <laughs> oh, God. I fucking... I haven't watched very many mech shows, uh, because typically they just delve into, like, war games and politics and shit. So, like, I've seen Code Geass. I've seen a couple Gundams. I've now seen 86. And I've seen a uh, Voltron, because Voltron. <laughs> We're baiting. I've seen the original Voltron, thank you very much, where it was extremely heterosexual. Oh. <laughs> I see, I never know if that's better. <laughs> I I think in the case of Voltron, it's fine because the original Voltron and the new Voltron actually follow two different casts of characters. Yeah. yeah. So it's fine. I also watch I've, Transformers, so that too. I've never seen Transformers. Nick Knack attacked me the other day. He was like, you don't get to say anything about fucking fanfiction, especially like anime fanfiction, because you've read Transformers smut. Yes, yes the, the fact, fact that the words spark, spark and plug play, play have come out of your mouth. mouth. <laughs> Look. I was a confused teenager. <laughs> There's something very poetic about, you know how like English professors will be like, ah, yes, the most beautiful phrase in English is cellar door. I feel like it's the same with anthropomorphized car sex. It's just a really satisfying thing to say. It's like Afro-Eurasian megacontinent. Like it's just one of those cool phrases where you're just like, I just want to say that all the time. Yeah. Oh God. I fucking, we, we were talking about, I've been exposed. So um, I, I have a my anime list profile uh, where I like log mm -hmm. everything that I watch and read. And mm. I read a lot of like smut manga, right? Like porno, but in paper form. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I read this one like five or six. Kind. 
I read this one like five or six years ago called The Titan's Bride. And um, <laughs> not what you think, surprisingly, at all. No relation to Greek mythology. Um, That's not, not where my, my brain, brain went, went at, at all. all. Oh, I'm <laughs> not sure I want to know where your brain went then. But uh, so I read it like five or six years ago when it had like five chapters out. And I was like, okay, this is good. But there's like nothing of it. So I'm just going to ignore it until it gets more. So I read it like six months ago again because it was at like 60 chapters now. Uh, and then it had a, turned out it had an anime that came out last year. Uh, uncensored on Amazon. Six episodes. They're like eight minutes each. Uh, so I went and watched the anime. And then I was like, no one's gonna, no one's gonna be able to tell that this obscure thing is like smut unless they specifically look it up. So yeah, I'll add it to my, my anime list as a masterpiece because I thought it was a masterpiece. So I added it in and I was watching one of the Annie tubers. Uh, the Trash Taste podcast, and they were doing this quiz, and they were like, "What is the name of the boys' love manga that has uh, that is the number one most popular on the entire um, manga bookstore site? The um, the really big famous one, right?" And there were like a bunch of options, and I was like, "Oh, I know all of these. Oh, Titan's Bride's there. That must be there to throw off the other options." No, it's Titan's Bride. It is the number one most popular boys' love manga and anime on the entire website. Do they mean? bread like rye or do they mean bread like put your seed in sorry me. bride okay. okay titan's bride and it's boys so love. the second one yeah yeah cool. yeah so it turns out um now on my anime list there's a record that i think that the number one boys love manga is a goddamn masterpiece in uncensored anime form <laughs> so I like the freeform style we're doing here. If you cannot tell anyone who ever listens to this, which will be no one ever, hello. Um, I love the freeform thing we're doing, but we are definitely pinging around a lot of different subjects rather than delving deep into one subject that we know a lot about. So we're scratching the surface of many things instead of one thing. And unfortunately, wow, now I definitely want to go deeper into the mech verse we can make that an episode uh, it, later yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be a thing later but i'm gonna need to have digested a lot more content before that happens uh like i'm gonna need to know the history of all of this going back to the 80s Neon before Genesis we Evangelion do this episode and gundam right. right which should take me approximately two days probably with concerted effort <laughs> yeah if you read it it goes real fast yeah. yeah let's just let's just let my adhd brain hyperfixate on mecha tanks instead of uh coding practice and guitar for a minute and well, the, the, we'll be fine from, from next week on we will we will have like actual topics like we could each prepare yes. a topic or two to bring up that we know we can talk on yeah, yeah. like pockets in dresses and Do you want to talk general. about pockets yeah. now? I fucking is this even going up on the channel? Sure. sure. Oh, okay. All right. If this is going up, we're talking about pockets because pockets. We're talking about pockets. So okay, let's give. I I want I want like two or three minutes to give a short synopsis of the history of pockets as I know it. Okay, po pockets were awesome. And ladies had giant pockets. And sometimes we had belts that were just pockets, which I think we should bring back. And no, I'm not talking about fanny packs because I don't under... No. No, I want like a belt that's gonna... I want a tool belt. I want it to be leather. I want it to be on my hips. And I want that to be my bag because I hate bags and I hate purses. I just want a tool belt. This is the gayest I've ever been. I just want a leather tool belt that I can wear all the time and put my shit in. And in, like, the, I don't know, between, like, when did ladies have to start wearing all the dresses all the time ever ago? Um, for a long time, there were layers of skirts, and you had big pockets that could fit an entire turkey dinner in your pot in one of them. And uh, you just couldn't see them because they were under the top skirt. And then they were like, cool, ladies, now you get to wear pants. But because... This is super male gazy still, because if you're going to wear pants, it's going to be so like we can admire the booty and everything. Uh, we can't break the line. So we're going to we're going to give you the illusion of pockets because it would, it would be ridiculous 
to to have a pocket you have pants and like not have pockets as like the aesthetic so we're gonna give you like the illusion that there are pockets there we're gonna go to the effort of sewing in like it's not it's not that easy it's several layers of fabric it's like a curved stitch we're gonna sew it in but it's either going to be only shallow enough to put your hopes and dreams or it's just gonna be sewn shut and there's nothing there there's just nothing there because don't fuck with the line ladies how else is anyone gonna admire your booty and that's the whole reason that you get to wear pants in the first place so no more big ass turkey dinner pockets under under your skirts or whatever no more here's like everything i need for my life and to run away from my abusive 17th century husband pockets uh here's here's just your dreams gone that's the history of pockets do you have do you have a synopsis so, so first of all what i'm hearing <laughs> is your christmas present is a uh, batman's utility belt <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, for real. 100%. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the the feeling of a tool belt is very empowering. I can I can confirm. I fucking love them. See, the only problem is usually they're in brown leather and I'm really more of a black leather kind of person. Look, it, it's it's the Can it's, I have a green one? Look, it's 2021. Like anything's possible. <laughs> I had to think about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I also don't remember how old I am anymore after quarantine. I got it wrong. Oh my god. I don't remember how old I am either. But the weird thing is I keep thinking I'm older instead of younger. Wait. Oh shit. I don't know how old I am right now. Lara, am I 23 or 24? So I'll respond with the fact that I told my friend yesterday that I think I'm closer to 25 than I am to 18. But I don't actually remember. Okay, okay that could just be because neither of us are stellar at math. math. That's valid, and being born in 99 fucks with me. I, I can't add What? You only have year. to add a year. But, but I get it wrong. <laughs> Wait, I can... Right, I was born in 1998. I can just add two years to the year that it... it it's 2021, you just established this. I'm 23 years old. Yeah. I'm 20, 23 for the next four months. At this, at this point, I'm just bitter. I'm like, fuck being 23. Fuck being 24. Look, I spent my entire 21st year in quarantine. Yeah, right. You turned 21 in quarantine. That's the worst. Year. Like, I turned <laughs> three months in, and then it just stayed yep. that way. Yep. Okay, so, I will add a few things to your history of pockets. Number one being Please. that Look, I consider it a form of oppression that we are not allowed to have pockets large enough to fit our phones in them. I'm pretty I'm sure, sure it is a small scale, scale example of the fact that, yes, it is, it a, is a larger scale, scale amount of oppression. oppression. Yeah, but um, so yeah, I mean, you have basically the right timeline. Although, fun fact, uh, pre, I want to say pre the start of like layering with corsets, because the corsets were what held up the weight of the turkey dinner pockets. Mm -hmm. So they didn't actually right, rest right. on your hips or anything. Pre then, like no. back in like um, medieval shift dresses and that kind of thing, um, yes, utility belts were a thing or an equivalent of. Right? Like you did have a it's... giant belt with a huge purse tied to it, um, which 10 out of 10, bring that back. Low Can slung my... belts wardrobe... across our hips. Can my, Can my wardrobe, wardrobe be 14th, 14th century peasant? peasant? I mean, yes, very easily, surprisingly. Jewel tones, natural fibers, nice and warm, easy to move, adjustable. I lo I gain weight. Who gives a shit? Just like oh don't my tie it up adjustable. as tight. Yeah, it's great. And I get to have a tool belt. You get to look like Aowen, essentially. A little flowier, but Aowen. I'm fine with this. And then, um, you know, Pocket's got... Really, the start of Smaller Pockets was that fucking Edwardian, like, 1910s British silhouette where they were like, let's have the skirts come in a little bit more. 
um, around the women's suffrage movement. Fun fact, apparently during the women's suffragette movement in Britain, uh, sewing extra skirt, extra pockets visibly into all your clothing, like hundreds of them was a, for- was a strong form of that movement. That's, That's dope. dope. I know. Right. Just like sewing like hundreds of pockets onto your coat and your, your skirt, everything. I love it. And then I've had an apostrophe to me. And then I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm I keep interrupting. interrupting. No, and then there was the fucking new shape and like new silhouette and oh my god, how dare D- you, Christian Dior's, Dior's new look? Yeah, which was also but that the- had room for so much. Blur, that, that had room for pockets, but it doesn't because the only way you were able to get to your pockets in the 17th, 18th century was down the slits in the side of your skirts. Oh no, you're talking about that. I'm talking about um. 1940s post-war okay yeah that also fuck uh dior's new look um and its influence on the modern interpretation of a corset into something actually terrible for you because like pre okay pre-1900s corsets were for support you did not tight lace into them till you couldn't breathe you laced them tight Mm -mm -mm. enough to hold your tits up so it didn't hold your hurt your shoulders and oh boy do i fucking need that Bring that back. Right. <laughs> I like like pre nineteen hundred. Yeah, you want to create a silhouette? Don't cinch in. Just pad out. Bring back silhouettes that rather than pulling in, you just pad out. <laughs> oh God. Excuse me. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> and now, so, and now we have, where are we? and now we have the TikTok, right? The, I love your skirt. Thanks. It has pockets. Pockets. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely like a bird mating call for a second. Like. <laughs> But yeah, because you put your hands in the pockets and you're just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's nothing cuter than the sheer joy of telling like a girl or someone who's who's wearing a dress, like, I like your dress, and them turning and being like, it has pockets. That that is that is one of the most cathartic things a woman can feel in 2021. Yeah. Yes. Like genuinely, I and I like how. We, look, we have for so long, right, in the last like five or six years, complained so so vehemently about not having pockets in dresses and skirts that now the fashion industry is moving towards pockets in skirts and dresses everywhere. Social media is the best and the worst thing because like we get to see all the terrible things that happen. There kind of are sometimes maybe some consequences for that occasionally. But also, what they really listen to is the capitalist market and the fact that we are way more likely to buy your shit if it has pockets. Also, I appreciate that um, although cargo pants are not a fashion statement on men, they are a fashion Uh, statement on women. Yes. Yes. Because See, I have had uh, my other thought of like an acceptable pocket or um, carrying device that is not a bag because fuck bags is talk about things that break the line like seriously like if you're wearing a crossbody and you have any kind of chesticle then it's just falling in the middle and then like you kind of like you don't have to wear a bra but like it's it's kind of uncomfortable if you are wearing a crossbody bag and no bra it's kind of a recipe for disaster no okay my idea is a thigh holster I, I, right? So I desperately just want thigh host holsters for everything, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. just a la, a la Tomb Raider, right? Just thigh yes. holsters. Yes. I, I keep looking at them on Amazon, like ones that are like big enough to fit like a small notebook and like my wallet and Man. shit. And I'm just like, I want it. Etsy. Etsy. Oh, yeah, but Etsy's expensive and I'm a college student. I feel bad. That's fair. I feel bad. I will support I don't... Etsy when I am no longer a college student and have a real job. I have a real job. 
I can't afford Etsy. You know what's so fucking... Uh, you know what the Gen Z life is? The millennial Gen Z cusp life or whatever. I don't... Whatever. Is, like, I don't want a supercar. I wouldn't say no. I don't want a supercar. I want the money to buy my meat at the farmer's market and buy my clothes off Etsy. Yeah, like I don't I don't want the money to buy a supercar. I don't want the money for a big house or anything. I literally want the money to to have the time to invest into buying good cotton and then learning to use my sewing machine and making my own dresses and skirts in the style that I want to my specifications. I know. I know how to sew. I can sew pretty well. Um, I can work with like some sheerer fabrics, some different tensions. I can hand sew really well. I know my way around. Do I have the money to make my own clothes? No, I don't because good fabric is expensive. And that's before you need all of like the bias tape and the lining and the muslin for the like drafts. And I just, I can't. And interfacing. I, no, ah, yes. Although, uh, fun fact, uh, cheap hack for putting, like, some extra boning in your clothes without having to buy actual, um, uh, not, well, they don't make, like, boning from, like, whale baleen anymore, but, like, the artificial boning. Um, cheap hack is, uh, yes. extra thick zip ties. Cut them and file them down to size. This is depressing. That is super, that's, like, a depression level, like, how to that's like how they used to make flower sacks out of pretty fabrics so you could make dresses out of them like if your clothing is terrible quality and you want to make it last a little bit longer so you want to put in boning and you can't afford boning why don't you just use <laughs> zip tie that's terrible that's terrible i watched this one youtuber and she was making like this 17th century corset but it requires like almost solid boning over the entire thing and it's really mm. expensive to buy artificial baleen yeah, yeah. Like, really fucking yeah. expensive yeah. but if you just buy like a giant roll of like zip ties right just like cut them and like file the ends down so that they're not like sharp and pokey and just use them how about we just make things affordable? Yeah. How about how about we pay everyone a wage high enough to buy the things that we want to buy and live? Right? Like, uh, I work a good job. I work for the government. I'm not telling anybody in what capacity. I work for the government in one of the most expensive states and prosperous states in the country one of the biggest economies in the world and i can't afford like life <laughs> yeah right like I, i'm a college student right like my entire purpose in life right now is to dedicate myself to getting a degree right but uh let's put it this way um i don't qualify for stimulus checks yeah at all in quarantine i'm a college student who doesn't work and i don't qualify for stimulus checks isn't that fan fucking tastic? I go to community college and I can't even get the government to help me. It stimulates my rage. <laughs> right. It stimulates my anxiety when I see textbook it prices. It stimulates my desire to eat the rich. I mean, it's kind of a valid solution. Like, I, I don't want to be mean about it, but, like, if we just brought back the guillotine, I feel like the rich would be a lot better about paying their taxes. It's really, it's the, it's, it's a humane, it's a humane solution. But here's the thing. I don't actually want to eat the rich. I'm a really good cook. I don't want to eat the rich. Well, yeah, mostly, because mostly you are because those people eat. get really, yeah, but also those people get really into exercising. And that means that their meat is going to be really tough. Or, alternatively, you eat Donald Trump who eats nothing but McDonald's hamburgers and Diet Coke. I don't think that would taste that's, good. That's... I don't eat, I don't that, eat much that much junk food. <laughs> I... Oh, God. I And I hate that, like... The, the biggest problem is that, like, we can't afford to dedicate the time to doing things like cooking or sewing because we have to use that time to make money just to pay for, like, apartments and, like, non-good food, you know? Right. Right. So back to pockets. Yes. 
I mean, it, it was a justifiable diversion, but yes, back to pockets. We have no, no, successfully. No, no. It goes into the larger issue that pockets is kind of are kind of a part of. Yeah, and I think it's it's great that we have kind of successfully moved the fashion industry towards pockets in all clothing, right? Unless there's an actual reason for there not to be pockets, but unfortunately, yeah. that only applies to skirts and dresses. You still cannot buy like mm-hmm. women's like skinny jeans with pockets big enough to put your phone in. Like I can get my fingers up to like here into my pockets. Oh yeah. That might be part of the reason skinny jeans are not doing as well. Like we had such a skinny jean moment. I was so de- ready for that to be done so soon. And I'm kind of glad that it's going away and fuck skinny jeans. Um, yeah, but even um, I don't like even flares, for example, right? Like they flare out from the knees with a lot of extra fabric, but flares are tight as all fuck on the hips and butt, and the pockets right, are not the big. Hips. Yep. yep. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of all jeans because women's jeans are just super tight at the butt and hips. Because you buy men's yeah. jeans and like in men's jeans, right? I have to fucking size up like you wouldn't believe at the waistline to get it to go over my ass. But it means that like the mm-hmm. thighs, like, yeah, shit, I can fit two 20, 20 ounce sodas into each pocket. Yeah, that's the thing. And uh, yeah, it's because it's so tight. I found that, and this is the thing, like my favorite jeans, the jeans that last me are made well jeans. They're like, a, they're between 80 and $120 a pop. And yeah, they're still tight in the hips, but they have giant pockets. I can put a I can put a lot of shit in there. It has to be pretty flat shit, but I can put a lot of shit in there. Um, but like, those are really expensive, really high quality jeans, and it took me several years of searching to find a brand that would sometimes make jeans that have okay pockets and i have and i like i love that there are those options right like that's fucking fantastic but then i alternatively in the same sentence i can say i fucking hate the plus size fashion industry because there are no plus size jeans that are not jeggings basically past a certain point like i don't i have at least 13 or 15 varieties of jeans, like totally different styles and types across from like three different stores because I used to work for a plus size chasing, plus size clothing chain and we got um, a ton of clothing super cheap because they wanted us to promote it. So I have at least 30 pairs of jeans across 15 different styles and you only- don't like You don't jeans. like jeans. I, well, first of all, I, okay, quarantine <laughs> taught me one thing. I like a nice healthy breeze around my privates. To quote the wizard from Harry Potter, <laughs> I to do quote, to quote <laughs> a character very specifically. In case anyone does not have the like encyc- encyclopedic, encyclopedic, enc- the very uh, thorough knowledge of Harry Potter that Lara and I have, this is one of the early chapters um, of uh, Goblet of Fire when they are at the World they're Cup. They're waiting in and line for walking water. through the camp. And they see Seamus, and I think they see Cho at one yeah, point. Yeah, and this is some uh, random uh, dude they... who's not named, or he's called Archie, I think. I think he's Archie. Archie will something? And he's wearing a woman's uh, night dress. <laughs> because he prefers <laughs> a nice, healthy breeze around his privates. The ma- the Ministry of Magic Wizards are trying to get him to... Put on pants. Uh, put, put on something uh, probably more acceptable for muggles. And he's like, nah, I bought this It like... Marks and Spencer's, fuck you. So I, I just have discovered that I absolutely hate wearing pants in general. In fact, if they're tight in any way, I just... Honestly, harem pants are really the only way I can justify wearing pants these days. Or not like so comfy. not like the drop Joggers. crotch, Joggers. but like proper harem pants. Like way out to like the ankles. I love me I some love joggers, me some joggers man. Yeah. So, but I, I do have like 30 or, 30 or so pairs of jeans from this these two stores I worked for. And... There is one pair between the two of them that is big enough, has a pocket big enough to fit my phone, and they are cargo style. Also, every single one of them is that god-awful four-way stretch material. Because if you're plus size, we have to put you in stretchy fabric. We couldn't possibly just add a little extra to the seam allowance on a normal fucking fabric. There are, and like, this is not a good excuse for having shitty quality, plus, like the majority of plus size fashion being very shitty quality, even when it is ex- the expensive shit. 
there is an entirely, not entirely different, you do have to draft your patterns differently for plus size clothing. Okay, we are running out of time a little bit. I think the last couple of minutes should be us each kind of going over who we are. <laughs> you go first. Well, I'm Seki. That is the only name you're going to be getting from me if I do all the editing correctly. Um, I like anime and I hate not having pockets in women's clothing. That is my entire what are, personality. What are your pronouns? Anime and pockets in clothing. My pronouns are pockets in clothing and he, she. <laughs> She, her. her. I am TBD, which is pretty much, yeah, that's honestly kind of an accurate name. Uh, I'm a non-binary uh, bisexual. My pronouns are they, them. Uh, I like fantasy, sci-fi, and various trash. Uh, and Lara will be probably largely educating me on anime. Um, I'm gonna have to, like, actually start watching it. Which, like, it's been... Okay, anime is like comics, where there's so much of it, and I don't know where to start. My solution, right? It's but, always faster to read. So manga. So manga. Yeah, well, basically, because the, the simplest way to do it, right, is if you don't know what you're into, read a bunch of different things, and then if you know if you're into it, go find an anime and watch it. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Has Seki has wow. done this. Um, we will see you next week. And we will see you next week. <laughs>